Good morning, so I'm here in the French Pyrenees for four days of walking, can't wait. Uh, I got here last night super late at about 1.30 in the morning after eight hours of driving, but when I opened the window on the way I could smell the pine forest and it felt like I was in the mountains. So I, I don't even know what it looks like, uh, I haven't even looked at it yet, so let me show it to you. Here we go. Oh my god. Oh, so not bad at all. Beautiful fir trees. A, a gorgeous smell. Really, really nice smell. So here we are, we're heading up to Les Angles um, and the Lac d'Aude. We're going to be taking a yellow and red blazed path, which means a Grand Randonnée du Pays. There are Grand Randonnée that crisscross the whole country and Grand Randonnée du Pays, which are uh, loops which are in a particular area. So we're going to be going there. So tell me truthfully, am I a little bit geeky with all this stuff? hanging around my neck all right i've got bag for camera money that's it i've got my compass and i've got my plastic map case with you can take a look at this maps ign maps which are the french um 21 to twenty-five thousand maps with contour lines i printed those out for each stage of the walk plus the instructions Plus, a big map of the whole walk here. Seriously, is this overkill? So, after a kilometer on a road, uh, I hope that's the last road, we're um, here at the junction and we're going to start the proper path. It goes up there behind me. We're going towards the Lac d'Aude. 1.8 kilometers an hour for two kilometers that's because it goes up there that's gonna be steep all right so give me up to a little meadow you can hear the cows I think we've got our first lake coming up. That is Lac Dode down here behind me. You can just about see it down there.
12.45, almost lunchtime, going over here to the Refuge des Colomelles. And these are two Perriques. I'm doing the Tour des Perriques, the Tour of the Perriques, P-E-R-I-C-S. And these are the two Perriques, Le Grand Perrique et Le Petit Perrique, uh, the Big Perrique and the Little Perrique. And I might do those this afternoon. It depends on what they say at the Refuge. Otherwise, maybe I'll get up tomorrow morning and go to do them uh, quickly before breakfast. Uh, so I don't have to carry this up there because it looks kind of steep. So this is the Refuge des Camporelles. Beautiful, beautiful place. And even if you're self-sufficient like I am, I've got my own camping gear. Um, the French call it en autonomie. The refuge like this can be a really interesting place to stop. They're useful because uh, sometimes it's nice to have a bit of company. You can get some good uh, home-cooked food. The food's generally bio. There they are, <laughs> run by really nice people. Uh, they're super helpful. They give you lots of local information. Uh, the refuge are a great place to get. Um, you can get fresh water if you buy a beer or a juice or a piece of um, black currant pie. Then they will. Uh, they'll uh, let you charge your batteries. It's a good place to charge batteries, get some beer, some fresh water, and above all, use the toilets. Um, you can either choose to sleep here in dorm dormitory style, or you can bivouac uh, around the lake, or you can do what I did, I just went a little bit further away. And um, these places, by the way, there are no roads, but I do see a car. Uh, they are uh, supplied by, um, by 4x4s. So I got the scoop from the lady at the Auberge. Um, there are my two peaks. So I'm gonna get up early. She said to, to, the best time to see it is to uh, get to the top of the first peak at 6.15 in the morning so I can see the sunrise. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> and uh, so I'm gonna get up at 5.30, come back here, go up there, up there, and then up the arete on the front of that mountain and then down the other side down there and then up to the next mountain then back around the back all of that should take she says two hours i'm gonna give it three hours early tomorrow morning So this is all mine. This is a lake off the path and there's no one else here around it on any side. So it could be mine, but um, there's a bit too many bugs. So I'm gonna go try and go up a little bit higher, just following these streams. Gonna go from lake to lake, just following the streams. They have little streams that connect them and it'd be nice to camp. Maybe beside a stream because that would be moving water and it's a nice sound. So I think I'm going to go to the to the head of this little lake and find the next lake up. Oh dear, when I'm down, I think I'm down. This is where I think I might sleep. I want it to be near a lake. You can see the lake behind me, a private lake. Like no one else can be on it or near it. So that's a lake. It's like a one acre lake and there's no one else near it. There's a bit of a breeze, so it's not going to be too hot and the bugs won't bother me. And I can look out at the mountain I'm supposed to climb. And I should go over there and figure out exactly where I'm going to go in the morning. But I'm really comfortable here and that going over there would involve putting my boots on. I don't know what I'm going to, I don't think I can do that. I don't know. Hmm. on my legs. I will take my body tomorrow night.
and I had beer tonight. I went back to the refuge, 40 minute round trip, get a bottle of beer. Seriously, that's a really high mountain. She says it's easy and safe and you follow a path. If that weren't the case, I wouldn't be doing it because I'm not an idiot. And if it doesn't feel safe, I will turn around in a second because I'm not an idiot. All right, beer time. Oh, cold beer. Four o'clock in the morning and I'm getting up early so I can go do these peaks. So it's difficult finding your way at night. I just have your flashlight. Here's the river to cross. I don't know if you can see anything. There are lots of stepping stones fortunately. I have to go across there. Not really a river, a stream. Easy. Um, so it's about 5.45. I'm running, running late. Uh, you can see that the sun is beginning to come up. Uh, the moon is still shining behind me. So it's beautiful. So I'm not a fan of decorative cairns, but a little cairn like this to let you know you're on the right track. That is very much appreciated because the whole mountain looks like a big pile of rocks. So the cairns are a big help. Uh, so this is a little bit um uh, so this is this is a little bit hairy actually um, i had to come down let's get under the sun i have to come down here and go down there and it involves a little bit of uh um of kind of a, a little bit of old-fashioned uh climbing so looks kind of steep over there but um, it lowers off, it uh, slackens off after about 100 feet. <sighs> okay. Okay, after climbing down that, uh, we found the path again. Goes down there, goes down there, da 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 da, and then we get back on the ridge. So this is it, I uh, go along, do these few peaks on the arete, on the crest of the top, and uh, it's rocky. It's a little bit of rock climbing, but um, at least I know that's what's involved. So as soon as I know that, it makes it much easier. Um, before that, I was hesitant, before I knew that it was the right way, I was hesitant, I didn't want to go up too high and get stuck and have to climb down, because climbing down is much harder than climbing up. It's really hard and I would hate to get stuck and I should be rescued because that would be super embarrassing and not a good day. 
but everything's fine. I found my way on a, a GPS route and I'm right on it. So all is good. Just gonna watch my feet, watch my hands. Okay, how do I get down here? Just keep following the crest, I guess. Woohoo! I mean, snow, I'm in a little patch of snow. Um, I actually can't hang around because I need to get down because it's been too long. I need to get some water. I'm gonna head around to that little lake, get some water, purify it. I wish I could frolic in the snow, but it's on rocks. I'm gonna be careful. All right, but I'm in the snow. Hold on. One foot seems kind of solid. That is my foot in the snow in the Pyrenees in July. Because I am a little bit, uh, a little bit hot. No, I'm actually not hot. I'm just uh, more thirsty. And uh, I want to get back. God, I wish I could go swimming. I would love that. So I'm down, and I just have to find the trail. Uh, if I just walk straight, it'll be there. <laughs> Somewhere over there. But it goes that way. If I go that way, I have to run into it. C'est logique, it's logical. Man. That's where I'm heading, there's a lake down there. I did get some water, I'm just waiting for it to purify. It needs 30 minutes. I'm gonna drink it as soon as it's purified. I'm a thirsty boy. My lips are dry. I should always carry extra water. I carried a liter, should have carried two. You never know what will happen. Silly, silly. I brought my first aid kit because I'm paranoid about that. Although if I'd fallen off the arete, uh, first aid wouldn't have been much good. Could have helped with little cuts, but uh, yeah, wouldn't have done much good. Oh, come on, I don't see a path. Where is this path? Yeah, and oh my god, I didn't bring sun stuff. That was stupido, stupido. Like, even if I thought I'd be back by 10, you might not be back by 10. So I'm wearing no sun stuff. My face is gonna burn. Hello? Hello? Is anyone out there? Tell me if I start going loop, 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 round and round. Keeping my head low. Don't want to slip. It's a big old grassland. Just to show that I'm not the only person doing the Tour de Perique. There are actually kind of a few people on it. You can still get away. So I ran into a guide uh, just when I uh, got back on the path. Here we are, by the way. Here, to be GRP Tour de Perique. So just a couple of kilometers. I want to get back, get a drink, make sure my stuff is okay. But I want to see some animals. I thought I'd see animals here. Nothing. I've seen bugs. I think there was a couple of mosquitoes and there was wasps like followed, like there were wasps at the summits like what is up with that what are wasps doing at the summit of a mountain like what sugary stuff is there at the summit of the mountain except for my cliff bar asshole wasps so beer 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 beer
trying to shelter my neck from the sun. My poor, poor neck. It's going to be so hot. Excuse me a minute. Bonjour, monsieur. Vous allez bien? Bonjour, les chiens. Now that's, that's a place to walk a dog, right? See, my lovely daughters really want me to get a dog, but I, we live in Paris and like, even for a small dog, what kind of life is that? You know, like there's nowhere you can put them on a leash. I mean, sorry, you have to be on a leash everywhere. There's nowhere you can put them not on a leash. There's like one dog run somewhere in the edge of Paris. That can't be the only place. It can't be like once a week. The, the dog can actually run or thing. So I don't think it's, it's just not fair to the poor little pooch. Yeah, I like YouTubing and all, because um, uh, it makes me a little bit more reflective. I, uh, when I'm talking, I kind of, it's like I'm thinking. So that's good, I just started doing that. It makes me look around more, because I like to take pictures of flowers and bees and pretty things. And I'm not a terribly observant person. But here's the thing. Should I have one day without YouTubing? One day where it's just me and this, and then I'll really look, and I'll be looking just for myself and for the for the moment, not for to put it onto into a video. I guess it does it matter as long as you look, as long as you look, as long as you see stuff, as long as you don't just like slide through life on autopilot. Um, one way or other, it's good. Okay, now is this a sight for raw, sore eyes? After all of that rock up there, the big grassland with no shade behind me, finally we get back to lake country. Trees and lakes and uh, calm and cold coolness. I'm going to take a rest. One last video today. I'm in an area with no cell phone service. My batteries are low. I'm going to turn everything off and just enjoy. So this is how I went to bed last night, my normal hammock setup. And this is how I woke up this morning. Uh, so I was uncomfortable last night so I got up at 3 o'clock, 3.30 in the morning. I decided to sleep on the ground like this. Um, this is what it looks like from the ground. There's something nice about being like right on the ground with the, with the pine cones. It feels sort of up close and personal. I've got my tarp set up, kind of low. Um, I can still see almost everything I could see yesterday. And the lake over here, I can see when I'm lying down. So that's pretty good. In terms of the gear that I have, I have got my my army surplus uh, Gore-Tex baby bag from France, and I've got my my just my my sleeping bag. Um, just the same thing as yesterday. Eh, pretty much the same setup actually. But I've got oh, you can just see it there, an inflatable mattress. That's really important because um, the ground here has got rocks in it like you can see there I found a patch that had no rocks in it but there's still you know there's if there's a pine cone or something try to get rid of those it could be uncomfortable and uh, I will my joke around with as normal
Emo tarp. It's a guy line system. It's made of this uh, this kind of stiff fluorescent cord, which is strong and light. And it's got like a cleat on the tarp end, not on the peg end, which makes some sense much easier to adjust. And to avoid it tangling, I do this. I make three loops. One, two, and three. And make sure they're the same length. And wind it back on itself and just do a simple knot like that. And that way, they keep ship shape, they don't get messed up. Uh, my campsite is being invaded. I was just about to leave and uh, this happened. I don't know what they want, so I don't know who's in charge of this troop. I don't see a shepherd. I think that is who's in charge. having a little drink you know what given that that's a sheepdog and we're in the Pyrenees that could be a Pyrenees sheepdog hello pooch wow Uh, one dog, oh there you go, one dog for maybe 200 sheep. <laughs> so it's more than one of them. So it's goodbye to the Refuge des Caporelles and the Deux Périques, Grand Périque, Petit Périque, Big Périque, Little Périque. There's the Refuge, surrounded by trees. Perfect location. That's why I stayed an extra day, couldn't resist. I'm doing the same thing that I did yesterday, coming off the mountains, coming up from Les Caporelles, across these uh, grasslands. It's just a bit of a uphill and then just doo -doo 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 -doo, across the grass till I get to um, the Pic des Mortiers. The Pic des Mortiers. So we're here on the Pic de Mortier and then we go down and there's there plus that snow patch down into the valley de Lorlu. In the meantime, I'm going to eat my last peanut butter and chocolate snack. Good for energy, not too melted, homemade, energy rich. Uh, I said today this morning that I might try and film every every hiker whose path I cross just because so often in YouTube videos it seems like the person making the video is all alone and I always wonder if that's selective editing. So today I was going to take pictures of everyone. I haven't done it so far but just to give you an idea of the number of people there are on this route. If you follow the path down there, tuck, 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 there's no one there. You can't see anyone the whole way. Oh, oh, wait, 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 yes, there are. There are two people down there, just at the level of the snow patch. 
There are some people, but honestly, they won't bother you. La réserve nationale de faune Orlu. Okay, Orlu. That means national reserve of fauna. That means animals. Show me your animals. Well, we're going down into the Valley d'Orlu. Gonna be cloudy down there, apparently. Here comes the cloud, look at that rising. Wow. I can feel the water vapor on my face. The refuge Dombe. That is a sight for sore eyes. It's gonna be a cold night tonight. There's some snow. So yes, it's gonna be cold. So here we are at the, the refuge Dombe, which might be perhaps Dombe's. I have to find out. Um, so it's a very different feeling to the other refuge. Uh, it feels much higher. It isn't much higher in terms of altitude, but it's cold. It's going to be there. So I can see some snow over there. So it's a very different feeling. It feels much more mountainy. Um, it took forever to get here. That that long that last part seemed to take forever and ever. Um, I took the amount of time. It says in the guidebooks, five and a half hours. I left at 10, I got here at 3.30, but it just seemed to go on and on and on. It was just like up, down, up, down. And maybe that's uh, that's what happens if your pack is heavy. Maybe that's what happens if you're a little tired. Anyway, it's really nice. People are arriving here all the time. It's kind of nice you check in and they offer you, they ask what you want. You can say if you want to stay at the refuge, you generally have to book. If you want to bivouac, you can do it around around here. So I'm just taking a look at the map. We came down here today. Um, this is where we were going around and around the flank of the hills. So here's the refuge. This is where I am now. This is the Etong Dombe, the Ombe Lakes. It's snow beside them. Very exciting. Uh, I'm going to tonight go up the side up here of this lake, about like a, nearly a kilometer, about nearly like, yeah, almost a kilometer, and then follow the stream up and go to these little lakes here and see if there's some grass beside them. If it's just rocks, I'm screwed, but if there's grass, I'll be okay. Because as you can see, there are uh, no trees to hang hammocks on. Thing is not a cliff bar. It is good. Keep it good. You eat well at the refuge. They're all kind of inherently bio, inherently um, organic, made by people who care about good food, good products. Oh, it's made with love. I'm sure. It's nice to have a little bit of a little bit of civilization because they're good people. I don't know. 
We don't have to be like alone all the time. I think both of you have a lot of people who 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 have a lot of
um, six hours, five hours. Um, I've just started on the first hour in a pretty enchanted little valley, having my breakfast of champions, Cliff Bar. Uh, anyway, this valley, I'll take a shot of it. It's quite pretty. It's a little stream, Le Ruisseau de l'Étang Fauré, the stream of the Lake Fauré, F-A-U-R-Y. Look it up. Wasps everywhere. Just look at this. Look how clear that water is and down there, look at that rock. It's like it's floating. I don't think I can resist. <laughs> That was unbelievable. And I'm clean. I feel like a new man. For the first two hours this morning, I was all alone. I didn't see anyone else. But now the other people have caught up to me. Maybe because I had a swim. You can see them up there. And hard going. Anyway, it was worth it. Ah, oh, man, I want to stay in the water. So we just came over the call, and look, look at this. Just look down. Look at that. Wow. This is what I have to do to hide from the sun. It's right above my head, so I just squeeze up against this rock. If I move my arm out, it hits the sun. Look at that. I have to be squeezed up like this. But it's good, it's cool. And there's a breeze. And I got cell phone service. Uh, there, oof, there we go. Uh, I finally got cell phone service thanks to Andorra Telecom, but I've had no cell phone service for more than 24 hours, which is kind of nice in a way, but I just want to let my loved ones know that everything's fine, and it is, so I've just done that. Um, this is a nice rock. Oh, rock. All right. You all right, rock? Yeah, nothing changes for you. You're on a different. Uh, he's on a different time, time uh, rhythm from us. A minute, an hour, a year, a million years for him. Nothing. He's been sitting down, sitting here for a long time, just looking down into that valley. Probably like for him, like a second ago when that reservoir was built, he probably was like, nah. But you know, he'll probably be around when the reservoir crumbles. Rock. Running out of stuff to drink. Not this much water. I should have filled up at the last lake, but then you never know it's going to be the last lake. Should have filled up. I always have at least a litre to spare, you know, even if there are lots of lakes around. Dum dum dum. There is the boring. 
reservoir, the lack to something or other. But as soon as I see an artificial lake, I'm sorry, I lose all interest. And my rock is somewhere over there, the one I was talking to before. And he'll tell you what he thinks. But I mean, I just see that. Yeah. And I know it's clean power. And it's a good thing and everything, but uh, not when I'm out in nature, I'm sorry. Yeah. The first trees I've seen in 36 hours. And a lake down there with water in it. Things are looking up. So we're almost to the Refuge des Bézines, um, but I decided not to go there because uh, I'm tired and I'm going to turn around anyway since I get there and start heading back towards Les Bouillous. Um And it's like another, they said it's another 50 meters uphill in a vertical gain, which I could do, but then I looked and it's like another half an hour. That adds an hour there and back, you know, half an hour there and back is an hour to my trip. I'm going to sit here in my glade eat my dried fruits, recharge, have a good rest, and then start going back up to that damn pass. I could have just gone straight from there, but why do we come in the mountains if we're not there for the walking, for the experience? Uh, stream washer with chlorine. So this is the last part of day four of the Tour de Perique walk from the Refuge de Bézine to the Refuge de Bouillouz. Oops, sorry about that. And it goes on like this for miles and miles. And normally this is a pretty beautiful scene, but compared with what else I saw earlier in the walk, just a bit boring. I know where to camp. I'm not going to camp in a cow field where I can hear or smell cows. I draw the line at that. So it's like 7.30. I'm going to get down as far as I can before it gets dark. So it's my last day, my last morning. I'm heading back to the car park at the Lac des Bouillous. Um, that's where I camped last night. Not bad at all. It's a reservoir for fresh water, but um, with a dam, but it's a pretty nice lake. So Le Tour des Périques, um, it's a four day hike, highly recommend it. It was my first trip to the Pyrenees and it offered me, uh, uh, oh, it was just gorgeous. Everything I could have dreamed of, like beautiful lakes, beautiful mountains, not too many people. You see people at the Refuge, but when I was out walking, I could go two, three hours without seeing anyone. If you take a side trip, then you're completely by yourself. Um, so four days, uh, it's, um, it's only like five or six hours a day of walking. It goes from refuge to refuge. And uh, so it's, it's totally doable. I would recommend just doing the recommended amount, maybe with a side trip up a peak, but not much more than that because you want time to enjoy the, the scenery and the lakes and all of that. Um, you can start from any of the refuge. Bonjour. And uh, so you can do it in any order you like. You can do it in both directions. But I rec recommend starting at the Refuge des Bouillous, which is uh, just up here, because you can drive all the way there. That way you don't lose half a day with the walk in. And also it's by far the most civilized of the Refuge. It's, uh, well, there's a road that goes to it. There's a hotel. And I'd rather walk away from civilization than have it enter into my trip. Part of what interests me is that it's 
four days without seeing a car, without seeing a road, and that was nice. Um, the terrain is steep, so got to be pretty much in shape. You hear me breathing, and it's rocky. Lots of roots. Have to watch where you're going the whole time, especially if you're alone. Uh, what else? Like first day, Les Bouillous to Refuge des Camporelles. Uh, it's magical because you're just discovering it. The Refuge des Camporelles is idyllic, beautiful, crystal lakes and the right kind of fir tree. Um, that was gorgeous. Then next day, Camporelles to Ombe, gorgeous as well. Ombe, the refuge is unbelievable in the incredible setting. So highly recommended too. Then Ombe to Refuge des Bézines. I didn't actually go to the Refuge des Bézines. So I don't know what the refuge is like, but I can tell you that the walk to it is spectacular. But day four, the walk from the Refuge des Bézines back to the Lac des Bouillous, not so good. It goes across, um, like you saw, uh, it goes across um, pasture which in retrospect, I was complaining about it yesterday. It's actually kind of beautiful. It's beautiful sort of upland pasture for cows. This beautiful river that goes down a gentle valley for miles and miles. But it's the miles and miles part that, that got me. It just goes on and on and on. I don't know how many kilometers it was. You can see it on the, if you look up the route. Um, and I just did it because I was kind of in my mode and I was not gonna camp in a cow field where you can smell cow poop. I'm sorry, I got standards. And it went on for just hours and hours, it seemed. All right, I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna come back to you in one second. Uh, one more thing to say is as I was coming back, through that, uh, the cow pasture, I met some people who are doing another Pyrenees walk called the Tour du Carlit, the going around Carlit, Mount Carlit, C-A-R-L-I-T, which is the tallest mountain in this part of the Pyrenees. Um, and he and his friend were thrilled with the cow pasture. They said it was so beautiful and could I believe it? Because they were on the Tour du Carlit and the first couple of days of that had been boring. And I was like, what? I didn't say anything to them because I'm sensitive that way, but I didn't want to ruin their trip. But in my head, I was thinking, what if that, my worst day for them was their best day on the Tour du Carlit? If you have one chance to come to the Pyrenees, Pyrenees do the Tour de Péric and not the Tour du Carlit. The Tour de Péric, you won't forget it. fantastic and it's homework time for you guys I'm new at making these videos I watch a lot of hiking videos um, tell me if you think I want you to answer specific questions question one is it better to do shorter videos day by day or one long video like this one question two uh, I left this one long just letting the images speak for themselves, figuring people can fast forward if they want. Do you prefer that or do you prefer something tighter? Last year I made videos that were like three or four minutes long, I think, per day. I don't know how long this one's gonna be. Uh, question three is, uh, do you care about me talking? And kind of honestly, like be, be, be frank, um, when I come into the mountains, I like to just kind of think and talk to myself a little bit and tell me if you find that chiant is what the French people say it's a polite way an impolite way of saying boring um, or if I should just cut that out because uh, I don't know if like you don't know me you don't care about me uh, so you don't care what I think about rocks about reservoirs so let me know um, so do let me know uh, if you like it subscribe like it, all of that good stuff. I forget to say it because I'm new to this. But seriously, if you want to see more, there will be more. And um, uh, 
if I haven't done it already, I'm going to start a, a channel called Friday Night Camper. So that'll be for a different kind of video when I go camping on Friday night when I'm working in Paris. I go to the woods outside and I go in my work clothes, camp slash work clothes. That'll be an episode. But for people who have a busy life, bonjour, mm -hmm. who have kids and jobs, can't get away to a place like this every day, then you'll be able to check out my new channel, Friday Night Camper. But honestly, this is better. <laughs> this is so much better. Look at that. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, I need this kind of thing.